The way of water was watering for sure. Hello everyone, welcome back to another review. I watched Avatar The Way of Water, the sequel to the huge, huge, huge James Cameron hit. 3D masterpiece CGI spectacle plot average movie. And, and if you're thinking, hey, I just want some of that again, you're in luck because James Cameron has pilfered his entire filmography to make The Way of Water. <laughs> Basically everybody from the first movies back, Sam Worthington, Sigourney Weaver, Zoe Saldana, Stephen Lang, Giovanni Rubisi shows up. There's a few other people from the original, but also you have like Cliff Curtis, Kate Winslet, uh, Jermaine Clement, uh, Edie Falco's in this thing. Sky people, the humans come back and want to find and hunt Jake Sully down and kill him to stop the insurgency because the sky people view the indigenous population of Pandora as bad people, even though it's their planet, you know. It's just another allegory for how the pilgrimage of people to America and then they wiped out the indigenous population and just, you know, countless times that has happened in, in human history is we've just gone somewhere, killed all the people that lived there before us, and then take over their land. But the main plot point here is Jake Sully and Atiri have a bunch of kids. Uh, Sigourney Weaver's avatar has a kid somehow. It's an allegory for Jesus Christ, uh, Virgin Mary type of stuff. And it goes deep into that allegory of like consciousness and like religion and everything like that. So um, yeah, they run away and they go to the islands on Pandora where the water people live, the water Navi. And so it's a bunch of like just beautiful, beautiful CGI shots that look so real sometimes and other times not. I mean, it just like just like the Avenger uh, Endgame and Infinity War, the CGI ebbs and flows. When it's good, it's really good, but when it's bad, you can kind of tell. So it's three hours and twelve minutes of just seeing. It's like a nature documentary in a way. You're just seeing the beauty of this world while also getting a very simple story. There's a lot of exposition about how things work on Pandora still, and we get all kinds of stuff. Like we obviously see the bond between animals with the other Navi people and you know, the forest. It's like the water people and the forest people. And so it's really fun to see that. The Jake Sully's and Natiri's kids are by far the best part of the movie. Like it's very routine. It's very much, you know, John Connor and Terminator 2 type of feeling where they're trying to teach and understand themselves and learn but at the same time trying to teach people how to be. And so it's just very funny how James Cameron just like pulled from all his other movies. You get like True Lies stuff, you get Terminator stuff, you get Titanic stuff, you get stuff from the Abyss. It's just all collectively in here. And it feels like he remade parts of those movies into the way he wanted them to be back then, but he couldn't because of the CGI. And so that was pretty interesting to see. The best part of the movie is when one of the sons, an outcast, just bros out with a whale and they talk to each other and it, they're both outcasts. And, you know, we learn a whole lot about the whales of uh, Pandora and how they're hunted and literally just their whole body is discarded just for this resin that's inside of their brain that can prolong human aging. And so we went from unobtainium to now some brain whale, whale brain juice is the most expensive thing here. And I guarantee you Avatar 3, something else is gonna be <laughs> the new thing. I wanted more of that movie. I wanted less of Stephen Lang in the Avatar body. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Basically all the military dudes that died in the first movie come back in the Avatar bodies and are hunting down, this is the Terminator part, hunting down Jake Sully. So there's that stuff. And I wasn't really a fan of it, but the whale stuff and just like, you know, the collective consciousness and all that stuff, I'm really into. And so 
it really breezes by. It's kind of be, be prepared as a three hour movie, but it breezes by like after the first 45 minutes, it just goes, it just goes nonstop. There's really great action. Like I didn't like the action at the end of the first Avatar movie, but the last action set piece at the end, it's very much gives you that Titanic feel, but it feels like it feels epic in a way. You got the whales fighting while well, one whale and you got, you know, the sons, parable the daughters and all this stuff and so it's a lot a lot to process it's a very simple story but there's a lot that he throws at you and i'm interested to see the sequel whereas <laughs> before i wasn't interested to see this sequel but i thought i'd check it out anyways but yeah it's way better than the original i'm gonna give this i'm gonna give this a six out of ten i see use it is very fun. I think it's much more fun than the first one. The first one is very routine and, you know, it takes forever to do stuff. This one is just like full bore, goes in. It There are parts where it feels like, just like, oh man, just hurry up. But there are long sections here where I just was enamored by Pandora and what they could do with the CGI and how realistic some of it looked. So. It does set up a third movie. There's gonna be at least a third movie. So I'm interested to see that. If you have three hours and 12 minutes, plus another 30 minutes for trailers and ads, I think it's worth the watch. I mean, what else are you gonna do on Christmas? Just go watch Avatar 2. <laughs>